Kentucky Love Song. An unforgettable odyssey brimming with witches, ancient secrets, dark deeds, and magical adventures. Part 5 The Proffer Tree Inn. On her broom, high above the magical dales, Leanna did her best to follow the small black bird, when suddenly Idler veered sharply to the left, the broom veering right, and once again picking up colossal speed as it sped towards what looked like a solid mountainside and certain death. Leanna instinctively tried all she could to slow it, her efforts quite futile. The broom knew exactly where it was going, its journey with Idler over, great bird never looking back as it elegantly flew away into the night. Hold on tight, Herrick, Leanna shouted, feeling completely twizzled as the rocky mountainside reared up out of the darkness. This is going to get splurked. She closed her eyes, bracing for the terrible impact, not knowing what or who to pray for, or even the words. Moments later, everything turned inky black, the roaring broom suddenly louder than ever before. She opened her eyes, took a huge breath and glanced back over her shoulder to see a tunnel entrance quickly disappear into the distance. They were inside the mountain. She cried out in relief, her voice barely heard above the twisting, turning broom. Occasionally she'd catch a glimpse of a flaming torch flash by where differing tunnels intersected as the broom flew on, clearly knowing exactly its end destination. And what tunnels they were, some tight as a coil and dizzyingly endless, some completely straight, plunging deeper and deeper into the heart of the mountain, before suddenly twisting, Leanna clinging to the broom for all she was worth, chin to the handle to avoid the low roof. At last they began to slow, the tunnels gradually becoming lighter. She took a deep breath, looking up ahead at a welcoming orange glow. A series of flaming torches lined the tunnel wall on each side before it suddenly opened out into quite the most enormous cavern she'd ever seen. Little shaman, she gasped. You could fit the whole of Trasgar in here. The broom carried them over a vast lake that filled the cave towards a small island in the very middle. A ring of trees circled a single building, smoke pouring from the chimney and laughter ringing out from inside. Herrick climbed onto Rihanna's shoulders as they slowly approached. High above, other witches whipped and crackled as they circled the cavern roof, letting fly with ruches from their wands as they dodged and chased each other around vast hanging stalactites. Vianna's eyes widened. Other witches? She'd never even thought of such a thing, but now, as the broom gently descended onto the island and landed on the well-kept lawn between the trees and the single building, she saw more witches sitting on benches, talking and laughing, jugs of Grimmargle wine in their hands, and a large stack of brooms propped against the wall by a heavy wood front door. Welcome, a friendly voice said to her. Welcome to the Roffer Tree Inn. Leanna turned to be greeted by a smiling creature with large paws holding a clutch of empty wooden wine jugs. She wore an apron, headscarf, had a long nose and quite the most piercing eyes Vianna had seen. Whoever this curious creature was, she seemed to know all about Vianna. Who are you? 
I am Lefran, the smiling creature answered, landlady and keeper of this most magical inn and all the magical days, the Vrofa Tree Inn. Nearby, a group of witches were beginning to take an unhealthy interest in the visitor, talking amongst themselves, nodding, hissing and pointing. However welcoming the landlady appeared, all Vianna's instincts told her to leave and try and find her way back. You wouldn't last but a few brink stops if you tried, the front gently chuckled. The broom would ring you right back here. Blink snaps. The time it takes to blink an eye. The smallest moment, or as we would say, the oidiest moment. I'm not sure what you mean, or what I'm doing here, Vianna replied aware a group of witches were now gradually encircling them. The frond smiled. Oh, I think you know exactly why you be here, Rihanna. And the truth is, I've been waiting for you for some time too. She turned to the witches, raising a small frizzing wand. Any of you that wants to feel the sting of this, just try taking one step closer. The witches growled, slowly backing away. Sisters of the crooked hats covered. Lafron explained, chuckling. All talk and no ruching. Always been the way with them. Now, shall we step inside somewhere a little more hospitable? You must be thirsty after your long journey. How about a nice mug of the old Grimoire, eh? Leanna nodded, unsure but somehow trusting the strange creature who could so easily twiddle such a fearsome bunch of witches. She looked back at their hats, noticing that indeed each one was crooked or twisted in some way. But a whole coven of them? Merely because they all wore twisted hats? It just seemed so ridiculous. Not that she'd ever dare tell them, for regardless of Lafron's confidence that they'd never draw a wand, they looked like the very last witches she'd ever want to tangle with. Stealing herself, she followed the landlady, still clutching her broom, Eric's talons tightly gripping onto her shoulder. At the door, Lafron pointed to a large stack of broomsticks. Leave yours here. You'll need it later. Don't worry. It'll find you. Can I ask how I know your name? Vanna nodded. And also how I knew you were going to ask me that very same question? Vanna nodded again. Lafron thought about it. No, she simply said, opening the heavy wooden door. You may not. And with that, she disappeared inside, Vianna leaving the room and quickly following into a riot of noise. She'd never seen so many rowdy creature witches in one place at a time. The whole room was packed. Some sung, some danced on the tables, others rooshed hats off with their wands, streaking blue, bouncing off wooden roof beams to sting others with a loud pop. At the centre was a large bar where more witches clamoured for Grimaga wine, crying out to be served, empty wooden jugs held high in the air. To the side, a large cauldron boiled over with what was looked like the blazing largest half van had ever seen, its flickering light shimmering across the entire inn. Dozens of thick, heavy candles burnt on tables, wall fixings and ceiling chandeliers, the hot wax freely dripping on those below. It really wasn't like any tavern Vianna had ever visited in the witch's quarter of Trasgo. She followed Lafron closely, marvelling at how easily the landlady parted the seething scrum. But just who was this creature? Who were all these other witches? Why on earth had Idla seen fit to bring her to such a twisty place? Nothing made any sense. Yet for once, far away from Trasgo, everything was simply exciting. And that, for Vianna, was quite the best and most unexpected of all feelings. Grinning, she pinched herself as she made her way through the crowd. No, she wasn't dreaming. It was all wonderfully, chaotically real. At the bar, she was amazed to see just one small witch flying on a broom, serving the boisterous crowd. The tiny witch confidently took each jug, flew to the large Grimoire, Grimoire wine barrels, filled them from a small wooden tap before returning them to its gleeful owners. She must have been no bigger than Vianna's hand, yet managed with a ferocious efficiency that told of many such years on her job. You're surprised? The front asked as she led Vianna behind the bar. Just because Brutal's an oily witch doesn't mean she's not the best witch to run this bar. 
Pepper, oily witch, actually. The tiny witch retorted as she flew past with another jump. It means very small. I'll try and remember that, Brianna said above the throng. Please do, Brutal replied, filling another jug. Or I'll have to roost you. I may have a pepper oily wand, but it's got the most twizzly sting. I don't doubt it for a blink snap, Brianna muttered, trying to avoid catching anyone's eye. There were so many witches pressing at the bar, yet the longer she looked, the more she began to notice similarities between them. Some wore a hooded hat she'd seen previously, others dressed quite smartly, their robes elaborately embroidered. One group had dark green robes, hats and wonderfully painted faces with leaves, trees and plants weaving right across in intricate patterns. Whilst another group's robes looked to be made from coarse brown sacking, their waists hung with thick leather belts, heavy with strange tools and wands. Four covens of the magical dales, the front explained, pointing at each in turn. The crooked hats you already know. All ones and no brushes, Vienna confirmed. Exactly, the front nodded. Next, she pointed to the smartly embroidered witches. These be the Lid sisters, the best flyers, who think just because they're smart on a broom, it'd be giving them the right to look down on the rest of us too. She playfully nudged Vienna in the ribs. Get far too big for their fancy hats, they do. And those? Vienna asked, pointing to the green robed witches. The earth weavers. Sisters of plants, herbs and potions. They look quite mild, but some of their practices can be most twizzly indeed. Lastly, the from pointed to the final group. See those with all the wands and belts? They're the bind naps, makers of things. If you want a new cauldron, wand or almost anything else, visit a bind nap and she'll make you one. But be careful of the price. And the chances are it will most likely cost you more than you could ever imagine. Oh, I don't doubt that either, Anna replied. I just never for a moment imagined there'd be so many other witches, other covens. It never even occurred to me in Transgar. The from chuckled. Stuck away in that old place? That's no surprise. See, the last thing that's always all too easy to forget, wherever you may be, whatever you are, whatever you be doing, is that you be the only one. Tis the folly of so much of it all. And tis why travel be the best thing for the broadening of the mind. Too many folks simply get stuck, simply believing their lives are all there is, and that nothing magical lies beyond. When really, so much more awaits those who choose to venture forth with an open heart. She looked at the other. But a part of you already knew this a long time ago, didn't it? It is simply that finally you chose to listen. Now that you have, now that you're here, you'll soon discover many more things about the Magical Dales than you ever knew existed, besides just these four covenants. Before Vianna could ask any more, the front clapped her large paws and ordered everyone to quieten down. Impressively, they all did, some scowling and grumpily shoving each other, but fairly shortly the entire inn had settled to a more or less respectful silence. Sisters, she announced, we have ourselves a visitor tonight. She's come from far away and we need to be extending to her our every courtesy. No one had seemed particularly keen on the idea. What coven is she from? One witch suspiciously asked. How'd she get here? Another one hissed. A tall, elegantly dressed Lid sister pointed at Vianna with a long, bony finger. Her voice was calm, measured, yet full of cold hostility. The peace, she said, amongst our four covens is extremely fragile. I strongly suggest you fly back to whatever squalid little cave you came from and never venture or return here. That is, if you value your wretched little life. The frond simply smiled at Vianna, nodding at her to speak. Vianna cleared her throat in the heavy silence. Believe me, I, I had no urge to come here. I, I was given a magical branch by Edler, then my broom flew me from Trasgar and... 
She got no further, then erupting into a chorus of mocking cheers. Trasgar! A grinning by that shouted out. Never heard of no place like it. You be making it up. I say we stop her. Idler, an earth weaver cried. That glop splurked bird is just an old spuddle. There'll be no such thing. You'll be telling us that all the foolish talk about Alga and the Great Crossing could be true next as well. But it is, Diana tried over the rising laughter. All of it. The boat is still there in Trasgar. I visited every day. Utah came to me. Idla brought me here. The lid sister swiftly held up a hand, silencing the imp. Why? Sorry, Anna gulped. Why, if what you say is true, would Idler ever visit you? She looked Vianna up and down. A frankly rather vulgar splurk who seems to think that simply having a scruffy crow on her shoulder somehow makes her Credible. Herrick cawed at her, narrowing his black eyes. Diana calmed him. I have no idea why she chose me. I'm I'm just a spuddle teller and broom maker. My life is probably nowhere near as magical as exciting as yours. P perhaps the simple fact is that I believed. The witch shook her head, tutting. All you believed, sister, was one of your own spout spuddles. I am Beth Geller, the finest flyer here. Several times I have ventured far out to Trasgar. I've looked down and seen your witch's quarter, where you live like specimens to amuse other creatures. You and others like you are nothing more than a casual entertainment. She stopped, silently thinking, sliding her tongue over her large teeth. And yet, if you are what you say you are, and have some sort of magical broom, surely you'd also be able to beat me in a flying contest. Wouldn't you? <laughs> the front broke the silence. Beth Geller, if our visitor wins this contest, then you'll give her the respect and listen to what she has to say. The witch laughed. <laughs> wins? Huh? The from whispered into Vianna's ear. Clap your paws three times. Why? Just do it. Vianna did, amazed when the heavy door swung open and her broom sailed over everyone's heads at the bar and straight into her open paw. Even Brutal nodded appreciatively. Not bad, for a beginner. Now then, Beth Geller, the from teased. Just what kind of a contest would we be talking about here? Seems like the stranger is more than ready to take to the lead. Beth Gallop frowned. Cheap tricks, la from nothing more. The other witches mumbled amongst themselves. What's it to be then, Beth Gallop? A race, she announced. To the raising stone and back. The end erupted in cheers. Vianna anxiously looking at the front. I've no idea where that is. Doesn't matter, the front smiled, pointing at the broom. The magic twig already beginning to glow bright red. The broom knows. Now get outside, climb on, hold on tight, and win. Moments later, Vianna was swept outside with the eager crowd. The front took Herrick from her shoulder. I've been waiting a long time for this, the landlady told her. Win, and you'll revive the League of Lidcombe and Witchery, and all it once stood for. And if I lose, 
Lafron chuckled. How can you? You believe you're a Zorkley. It's why Idler and the Ancients chose you. Who are you? Ganner asked as the brook began to roar. Really, Lafron? Who are you? But before the landlady could answer, Beth Geller had set off up into the vast cavern roof. Rihanna's broom instantly followed as the whole cavern filled with cheers. Brutus was streaking out into the echoing darkness. On her broom, Rihanna clung on harder than ever before racing for the roof, eyes shut as it spun, rocked and twisted through the dangling forest of dripping stalactites, before suddenly veering left into a tunnel entrance flanked by two burning torches. Beth Geller was nowhere to be seen, either already far ahead or having taken another tunnel. Rihanna simply trusted the broom as it tore through the matrix of tight turns, wincing as she felt the ends of her shoes perilously scrape against cold rock. Now, more than ever, she had to believe in all the spuddles, legends and stories so often mocked and laughed at by the others. Flying at reckless speed on a broom with its own magical will, Viana desperately hoped that for whatever reason she'd been chosen for such a splurked adventure, she'd be able to please the ancients. Eyes tightly shut, she saw many things. Aldrin standing by her mother's figurehead, the sea spiders, the storm, the dragon, all as she heard a strange new voice. As above, so below, you'll go to the raising stone. Fly like the wind and your name they'll know. Viana, Spuggleton, Sorkly sister of the Nid, for saving the sacred league is what she did. Diana opened her eyes as the wind burst all around, violently rocking the broom. She was out in the open. In front, she made out a large mountain in the darkness, and from it another small figure emerging and flying straight towards her, sending a streaking blue ruscher that missed her hat. In no wand, Vianna simply had to cling on as the broom suddenly dived, Beth Geller cackling in the night as she roared overhead, turned and sent two more deadly ruscher's arrowing after Vianna. Ahead, the mountain plateaued to a level area, and in the exact centre stood quite the largest boulder Viana had ever seen, the Raising Stone. In moments she was upon it, streaking around the back, and setting back the way she'd come, Beth Geller far too close behind. Think you can beat me, witch? Beth Geller screamed, blasting another breach and tore a hole clean through Viana's hat. You'll strafe first! But the broom had other ideas, veering away and plunging down before tearing through a thundering waterfall and up into a dripping tunnel. Behind, Beth Geller cursed as she flew through the heavy wall of water, shocked by its power, and tumbling from her broom to crash against the walls and drop onto the wet rock. Dazed, she stood, amazed to see Diana return, stop and offer a helping hand. Get on. Brianna ordered, punctured hat still smoking from the Verusha. Unless you really want to walk these tunnels by yourself. Beth Geller scowled. In the first instance, no witch can ever walk the tunnels. They're mirrored tunnels. To even set foot on them would instantly strof us. And in the second instance? I'm driving. Move over. But Viana shook her head and prepared to roar off. Beth Geller cursed and reluctantly climbed onto the back. These tunnels can strof us. You have much to learn about the magical dales, Beth Geller scowled. Indeed I do, Viana smiled. And I shall very much enjoy every oidy bit of it. Before Beth Geller could utter another word or curse, they both shot deep into the pitch black tunnel.
have been listening to The League of Lid Curving Witchery by Phil and Jackie Lovesey, adapted for your audio enjoyment by Ursula Brifthaf and Stoltz and Phil Lovesey, who would like to point out that no creature witches were harmed during the making of this magic cast. For more information about Creature Witches, The League, Matlock the Hare and the Magical Dales, simply visit www.matlockthehare.com. Thank <laughs> you.